Hello, ladies and gamers. This is uh, Splinter333 yet again. Um, this is a teaser for my Ultimate Defense of Batman Arkham Knight Part 1 story video. Um, it, it's a working title. Maybe I, I might change it a little bit later. Um, but this is just the Movie Studios arc. I have edited, as of so far, the intro to the story, Ace Chemicals arc, after the Ace Chemicals arc, Simon Stagg Airship, The Chase for the Cloudburst, and I have a couple more to go after this. Um, but generally, I just wanted to show you guys what I've been working on this whole time. So, also, if you have any suggestions of something you'd like me to cover, um, specifically when it comes to the story, maybe it's a certain character arc or a certain moment, something that you want to add, I am more than willing to uh, hear that feedback and add it to the video. Uh, as uh, even Easter eggs, even though they're kind of small, I want to be mentioning them throughout my video. So. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy. Also, this will be released on the main channel, and it'd be great if you can check it out at some point. Oh, and this is also the first edit. There is many more changes, and nothing here in this video will be final. With that out of the way, um, let's get this teaser started. Batman makes his way over to see multiple men waiting. So, Batman tries to get in, but is stopped by the main computer. Batman then synthesizes Harley Quinn's voice, causing Harley to send in more men. During that point, Joker mentions something important. What's confusing me is how the hell she found your top secret Batface, Batface. She couldn't find her own reflection in a mirror when I was alive. It's like something was holding her back. Now to add to this, keep these questions in mind for now. Batman makes his way down as Joker reminds him of what happened in Arkham City. Joker frames it as Batman killing him, and mentions that he will do it again tonight. And I think this is another instance of subtext. Like me and your mom, the key is to hide what's really going on. I've mentioned time and again that Joker is mostly Batman. What's going on here is that Batman is a cynical guy, meaning he sees the worst in every outcome. That's why he plans for the Justice League if they ever went rogue. That's why he stays away from others. This is the story's way of telling us that Batman is scared that in the end he will break, that there will be no going back, and then he might lose everything. This fear drives certain decisions, one of which is at the end of this arc. Batman gets in, and Robin, we see him just you know, casually beating on the men, and find the Jokers. Through the back computer, they find them in different wings in the movie studios. The first one you go after is Miss Bell. I have to admit, her dynamic is pretty interesting. She's mostly rooting for Batman, making Thug's comments funny. Once we all have the Jokers in order, I'll talk about what Miss Bell has in common with the OG Joker. Both Robin and Batman take her down, and a fun detail that you didn't know is that there's a difference if you do and don't counter Bell. If you do counter her, everything plays out like normal, and nothing of note really changes. If you don't counter Robin, you will get scratches that will be on Robin for the rest of the game, which is an insane detail. But I never got the scratches on me because just like a drug dealer to go to rehab to sell more drugs, I'm simply built different. After this, Robin makes light banter with Batman, and if you know Batman, you know how that goes. So, looks like you've made a friend. You gonna replace me? Cause I could use a break, and Christina here seems like prime Robin material. She looks up to you, she wants to spend all her time with you. I doubt she'd mind the awkward silences. But there is a purpose to this scene besides comedy. After that, Joker briefly mentions Jason, and the player is left with a choice. Go after King, or go after Charisma. In this playthrough, I went to King first. King is a combat-oriented boss fight. That one's taken down, move to Charisma. Charisma gives Batman a whole song and again we head back to the cell when Harley gets in our way. You have a choice to listen to Harley. I did it as quickly as possible because I thought Harley was just kind of annoying. I like to mention that this was before I played Suicide Squad so... Robin was here. I do not think he won. That's got Robin. Talk about cutting out the middleman. I redact my comment. They take down everyone to head back only to see that the Jokers are dead, killed by none other than Henry. After killing, he says that he wants to quote unquote purify the gene pool, which is exactly what Joker said a long time ago to Batman when talking about the other Jokers. Massacre the lot of them and purify the Joker gene pool. But once Henry realizes that Batman is slowly turning into the Joker, Henry shoots himself. 
Okay, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about all the Jokers in this arc. All the Jokers reflect a different part of Joker. Belle reflects the love of danger and the challenge and the love of Batman. Even her dialogue is rooting for Batman. King is about the combat and fighting aspect of Joker, showing the thrill of fighting a worthy opponent. And Charisma reflects his more artsy and theater-esque nature fighting Batman. And lastly, Henry. Henry is the dangerous, cold-hearted, and planning part of Joker. Now, I can see some people saying that this art isn't really necessary. I strongly disagree for three reasons. One, to show that Joker's infection is worse than you think. Two, Batman's connection with Robin. And three, Jason. We'll touch upon the last two in a second. First, let's discuss the fact that Joker's infection is very much an issue. This whole arc is a reminder of what Batman is really up against. All the Jokers that we see were once normal people, but because of this infection, it turned them into monsters. Joker is, throughout most appearances throughout this game, is the comic relief, but this whole arc is to show that he's much more dangerous than he can ever imagine, and it's a chilling sight to see that Batman could be one of him. And some of you may say, but we already know- Okay, my son, listen to me. What do you understand about conflict, okay? Because while Scarecrow and Arkham Knight are the antagonist, so is Joker. Now go to bed before I break your arm! And a quick two details for you. In one shot, you can see the damage of the bad attack from the beginning of the arc, and it shows how far Henry was able to go just to make it look real. The second thing is about amoebas. Now, I'm going to spare you the 20 minutes of looking this up, so I'll summarize it. They are a type of cell, but the most interesting and most notable part is that they can, get this, shape shift into whatever it needs to be, such as if they need to eat, they'll grow a mouth. Most of them are small, but they can grow. But here's the kicker. If an amoeba reaches the nose or brain, it can kill you. Now, I'm not a betty man, but I'd say this line is here for a reason. I think this reflects the Joker's disease pretty well, or this could be a coincidence up to you. I'll get to the last two things after this brief recap. After Henry shoots himself, Robin orders Batman to get in the cell, now knowing Batman is infected with the monster energy. Batman tries to escape, but it's pointless. While we're talking about this, here's a quick detail I bet you didn't know. This clip shows what happens if you get outside, and Batman says this. I can't leave this place. I won't be able to stop myself, and Joker will win. Interestingly, even Batman agrees with Robin. For a long time now, I thought that Batman did this to avoid fighting Tim, but this line of dialogue disagrees. Anyway, Batman gets into his cell and removes his cowl, and Robin takes on the militia all by himself. But Joker mentions that he isn't done with his story, his story about Jason Todd. Now, if you've been paying attention, I haven't talked about Jason yet, and that's for two reasons. One, this is how the Arkham series talks about Jason, mentioning him only at the end. Some say that this is a lack of thinking ahead, but I saw this has the perfect time to tell this story. And two, I want to address this all at once. The first scene is the first six months after Jason has been captured. Jason thinks that Batman could save him, but slowly the Joker shows that he's been replaced and that Joker wants him instead. Judging by the environment, Jason's face and Joker's been doing this for a while. The next one even shows that Joker has even branded him with a J on his face. That catches up to where we are now. Joker at this point has completely brainwashed Jason into hating Batman, and before Robin could tell Joker who Batman is, he gets shot. All of this is recorded and sent to Batman. After this, Batman is flashback to a few minutes ago, but Batman makes a very different choice, this time throwing Robin into the cell, locks him inside, and cuts off his communications. And to make Robin's day worth it, I told Robin about Barbara's death. Okay, before we end this arc, there is so much to talk about. Jason, Robin, and the key choice that Batman made. Let's start off with Robin. Batman and Robin's relationship isn't touched upon that much in detail in the Arkham games. The only real example of this is the DLC in Arkham City, but here I think the connection is quite clear. Batman has respect for him, but still worries about him. Batman critiques him only for the hope that he improves. Having said that, this is still Batman after all. And the Bat likes long silences. Robin looks up to Batman and they share a same amount of respect. And this is one of the main reasons why this arc is here. The game needs you to make you understand why these two are close. Every scene with both of them shows this. The back and forth and even the gameplay show this. You thought that was for show? Oh, I think you're forgetting that this is Arkham Knight. It works in stealth and in combat and to even take down Harley. The whole scene with Robin and Harley is because Robin trusts Batman to show up. While this isn't a big arc, it knows what it's doing and it does it well. But Batman sometimes worries too much and fearing what others do to him, all because of Jason. 
Jason is another main reason why this arc is so important. Jason's story in the Arkham Knight is horrifying. The original origin was pretty bad, but this is much worse. In the original story, Jason was trying to chase down the Joker or something, something about his mother. The point is, is that Jason got caught off guard and Joker killed him. His death was painful, but not drawn out. The Arkham series has him tortured for months and brainwashed only for him to supposedly die. Jason's story is something that Batman will never forget. Jason fought hard, but died harder taking all that rage and hate and pointing it at Batman, a man once seen as a father figure to him. Batman is in utter pain because of this. Now keep in mind, it's unclear if Batman knows if the first two scenes are real. There doesn't seem to be a camera like in the last one, but then again, Joker's branding on Jason is something we see later, so it's kind of true. So the origin is very loose. That goes for Jason's death as well. While we can piece it together, what happened, we'll never really see the full picture. And the game's story plays on that. Okay, so Tim and Jason are a key to this arc, Big Whoop. I want you to defend this scene. What scene? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that scene. There are apparently people who have problems with this part of the scene, and I see it as utterly proofless. Jason's story is the hammer on the head, but to me, it's not the only overall reason why the story makes him make this choice. This is for an arc. This is the same issue I find criticisms against DMC Devil May Cry's Dante. Dante's an asshole. Yeah, because that's part of the arc and the overall story point. The same can be said for this choice. Batman's whole arc is that he doesn't want to let others close to him die. Just hours ago, Barbara just died in Batman's mind, and of course he's going to try and protect him. Jason's story reminds Batman of what can happen when his loved ones are brought into this. To top this all off, as I've laid out all the reasons before, Joker's influence is infecting him. So even if you were to find this scene somewhat out of character for him, Joker's influencing Batman more and more, leading to this choice. If anyone is saying this is out of character, then I'm sorry that they're very, very wrong. To wrap this whole section off, one key detail that hits me through a building is that you can tell Robin that his future wife is dead. Jesus Christ, I could, I, I, I have no words for this scene. The impact is clear and the damage is done. Batman did it to protect him, but at what cost? Arc over. Alrighty, and that's the end of the section and the teaser. So if you can leave me some feedback, some comments, um, some stuff that you like about the game or maybe want me to add or a certain detail, blah, 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 stuff like this. Of course, like I said before, none of this is final. So take it as you will. Anyway, uh, check out the main channel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Coming out soon, uh, hopefully.